Hey guys, welcome back to the Gulf Coast Grow Show. I'm your host, Jason Lee, and I'm here today with Chad Burke, uh, the president of the Economic Alliance, and we're joined by Russell Carter of Bowler Engineering. And the topic today is the Gulf Coast Industry Forum. And again, for those that have been members and longtime participants here at the Economic Alliance, it's kind of the signature flagship event of the year. We're going to talk a lot about that. But if you haven't uh, been there and or you don't know what we're talking about, you want to stay tuned to this and you want to circle back at the end of the episode and get more information because this really is a, uh, a huge and phenomenal opportunity to come out and meet new people and get plugged in to everything that's happening across the ship channel and inside of our region and, and, and really across the economy of Texas. It's just a, a wonderful week or a wonderful daily event that we put on every year. So with that being said, uh, we're going to dive right in. Chad, Talk to us about the theme of the event this year. Sure, um, and I appreciate it. Um, let, me, let me back up one second and okay. say, um, you know, this event, I think we're headed into our 14th year of this event, and, it, and we are not an events organization. We're an economic development corporation, but the Texas Chemical Council and East Harris County Manufacturers Association came to us uh, you know, 14 years ago and said, hey, could you host a forecasting conference for our industry, for this region, to tell folks what is going to happen um, and what's going on, what they can expect moving forward. <clears throat> and so from that conversation um, grew uh, and developed the, the Gulf Coast Industry Forum, right? And so each year our theme is kind of like, it's, it's looking out to find out what is happening. This year, um, you know, in conversations with all of our members, with our stakeholders in, in not only the port, but the manufacturing industry, supply chain industry, um, it, it, it self-forms, right? We don't, we don't pick the theme. It, it comes from the information that is happening. Organically. In, exactly. Mm -hmm. It happens organically. So, uh, and, and Russell, our, our chairman, and I, we've been chatting back and forth about that. And really, if we had to kind of put a name on it, it would be, it would be growth and transition, right? We've got tremendous um, pent-up capital investment ready to come back out on the market post-COVID now. We've got expansion projects going up. We've got um, uh, new, uh, exciting technologies, uh, advanced recycling, um, uh, alternative fuels, those types of projects hitting our region. And at the same time, we're, we're at the tip of everyone's tongue is, is what does that energy transition look like when, when we're talking about um, uh, 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 CCUS carbon capture and sequestration, advanced recycling, hydrogen hubs, the funding and support coming at, from the federal level down to try and drive some of these new technologies. We've got all kinds of, of transition issues and, and projects hitting the ground. How do we support that? What's that look like? But at the same time, we've got, mag, you know, we've got great growth in our specialty chemical. We've got great growth in really global energy support in LNG. Um, how, are we, how are we leveraging the advantage we have in natural gas in North America to support Europe now, mm -hmm. given some of the things that are going on in, in Ukraine and with the Russian war, right? So there's a lot going on there, right. and, but that, that, that organic kind of feedback from all of our members is really driving the, the, not only the theme, but the, the, you'll see in the speakers that Russell will talk about here in a minute as well, um, who's going to be on the agenda and what are those messages going to be. So, and, and, the, and the global supply chain issues are really driving significant investment activity back into the U.S. You, we're seeing a lot of onshoring of manufacturing and all of the necessary um, front end and back end value chain that goes along with that manufacturing. So the supply of raw materials and the distribution of, of finished product from those manufacturing uh, companies that are bringing projects back to the United States because of the issues that we've had coming out of COVID and now with the war in Ukraine. Um, so I think it's exciting news for our region. So I always talk, try to, we try to encourage people of the significance of paying attention to really the microeconomics, which is down here at the regional level. Our, we are our own economic hub that then supports Texas as an economic hub. Essentially, we have our own GDP. Uh, our state's so dang big and we're so dang good at what we do, right? Uh, let's take, go Texan. Um, but this 
kind of enthusiasm. All we hear is cl you know the clickbait that the world's ending and you know the economy is going to be the worst thing in the world. But what I'm seeing, what we're hearing, and what we're here to talk about today is some of the great things are coming regionally by moving this. And you just said it by bringing supply chain and onshoring. There's a whole downline of stuff that has to get built, developed, and produced so that we can continue to do that. And what does that do? It creates jobs, opportunity, excitement, enthusiasm, thanks for our region. That means more people move here. That means you build more houses. That means more stores are built. It means more retail yeah. comes. I mean, it is all part of it. Again, it's a signature Absolutely. part of the reason this organization exists. So that being said, Russell, why don't we transition over, talk a little bit about the agenda, the outline. What can people expect when they come this year to GCIF? Sure. Well, obviously, current events are driving the agenda. We're looking very carefully at um, what's going on in the world, what the impact of geopolitical decisions that are being made, uh, and how companies have to address the impact of global events uh, in supplying not just energy when, and chemicals, but all of the value chain for the industry, uh, both you know inbound and outbound, and the impact that's going to have to our region. And so. Uh, those current events are going to drive the agenda. They are driving the agenda. We're looking at the issues with supply chain. Uh, and Rick Campo with Port Houston is definitely going to, to bring that message uh, and, and help us better understand the impact of those uh, current events on supply chain. Uh, we're also looking at the global energy concerns. Uh, obviously, LNG, uh, exports of LNG into uh, the European region are going to play a major part of growth for the LNG business. Um, and so we, we want to address that. And we've been uh, looking at, and we actually have Mark Millette with Freeport LNG scheduled to come in and tell us uh, how the, uh, the situation in Ukraine and the, what's going on there, how that is impacting their business and the future that they see with the LNG exports coming out of Texas. Um, and then we've also got the, the transition to clean energy as a topic. And obviously there's a lot of electric vehicle activity going on. There's battery manufacturing that's going to go into electric vehicles. Um, we as the Economic Alliance have actually seen projects uh, coming into the door related to that specific you know, growth industry. And so we'll see a lot more of that activity and we're going to be addressing that in the agenda as well. Beautiful. And then so, uh, Chad, we're going to turn it back to you. Um, 14 years, right? You, you, and, and, and every year, it, it can, I mean, I've been a member of this organization for going o over four, so I've been to four GCIS now, um, all of which have been great turnouts, great events, um, and, the, and, they, and the content continues to get, you always leave with something that's, that's valuable and that you can take with you and that you can use and apply. Um, but it's, it's got to be hard to keep producing great stuff year in, year in and year out. So, and again, I know we're not an events organization, but it's a great event. So talk to us a little bit about some of the changes or some signature things that you guys are looking at this year that, uh, that we're gonna either, you know, that, that are gonna be relevant to this, that, that people can expect. Yeah, and so our, our um, strategy for any event that we, that we host is twofold. One, we want to transfer some really vital information so that people can make plans for their own business, right? Mm -hmm. So information transfer, and I think you heard that with uh, with some of the speakers and topics that, that Russell highlighted. But then at the same time, we want to provide a great opportunity for our members and, and, and businesses in this region uh, to network together. Right. If you meet somebody that uh, that you can do business with, then that helps grow your business. That's economic development. Right. So we try and combine both information transfer and a network atmosphere into each event. And this one, uh, we do that. We've made uh, the committee does a fantastic job of kind of reevaluating every year and coming up with with new best practices and new ideas. And so we've tweaked the uh, the event from last year to this year after after not having it for for 24 months and having to go virtual um, in 2020. Um, you know, we went back live last year, and it had been 24 months since we had been back live. So so we 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 had a great re-evaluation re of what to do now and so we've we have brought back in some really good ideas um, uh, 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 shorter conversations with some of our speakers longer um, networking breaks um, a reception afterwards a, 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 a cruise of the ship channel for speakers and sponsors the night before so wow. we're incorporating a lot of different things to really hit um, the two major 
uh, strategies that we have with the conference, which is, like I said, information transfer and the network uh, atmosphere. So I, I'm excited. I know the committee's excited. The information is going to be fantastic. I mean, it's just you can't get the information uh, about what's happening, not just in supply chain, but in manufacturing and energy transition and carbon sequestration. You can't get that information out fast enough these days. Um, and people are just thirsting for it on, on really on all levels because it's affecting business. Right. It's affecting the way that we're going to do business, not only in 2022, but for the next 10 years. So um, I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be, it's going to be an exciting event. Um, and it's going to have some great information. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, I know I'm excited about the, the, the reception coming back. I mean, mm -hmm. I know that was a, it's a great time to connect. I know I plan, I mean, that's a long day, you know, you, it starts early in the morning and you know, and then your team is working around the clock for multiple days. I hope you give them a day off afterwards. Oh yeah. yeah. They, they, so, they definitely get, yeah, they get, yeah, Friday off. <laughs> yeah, they get that Friday off. Cause it is a, it's all hands on deck, but man, the, uh, the, the power of, of from start to finish and just kind of the energy that then transfers over and then yeah. after all that all those people getting together and then you know breaking bread together and having some networking um i can just some of my most my, my the best relationships that i've developed are mm -hmm. at those pockets and those breakouts inside the organization which is such a great event so we're excited yeah go it's, ahead Russell. it's really that opportunity to uh i i guess you could say you learn what other businesses are doing and you develop this understanding of the opportunity that's there and you you develop those relationships where hey i can help you and you can help me and we can do this together to address the issues that we just learned about from these experts that are presenting at the conference absolutely and you know chad touched on the the committee and and the impact the committee really has in helping us align the direction of the conference and uh, kind of the schedule and how we work things and we've got a great committee uh, very dynamic, uh, a lot of great ideas come out of the, the team, and I would encourage anybody uh, watching that if they, they want to find a way to get plugged in, the Gulf Coast Industry Forum Committee is a great way to do it, um, and uh, you know, we'd be happy to, to have ideas and input from anybody. Fantastic, and I think that's a good way to transition to, you know, as we get ready to wrap up, discussing how and when you guys open registration and then yeah. how people can get involved and become sponsors. Why don't you cover that for yeah, us? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, allianceportregion.com is the website. Mm -hmm. um, you can go to the GCIF category there. Mm -hmm. uh, sponsorships are open and available, yep. um, along with all of the details as far as pricing for sponsorships and the benefits of those sponsorships. Registration is there and it's open. So uh, anybody who wants to get registered now and get it on their schedule, uh, that's available as, uh, as part of the, the website. Uh, and then certainly anybody can reach out to the staff or Chad or myself, uh, and we can facilitate that registration or sponsorship process. And I don't know if we've said it yet, but September 22nd is the day. Is the day. For, so. yeah. <laughs> September 20th. Mark so your put calendars. The, put that on your put calendars. Put it on, calendar. on your calendars. It starts, this year we're going to start at 8 o'clock. Uh, we're going to try and finish a little bit uh, earlier. We're sort of bumping it. Uh, we normally start at 9 o'clock, but we're going to mm -hmm. start at 8 o'clock. Uh, and we're going to try and be done uh, no later than 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon, depending on uh, the, uh, the number of speakers that we end up confirming. But, um, but uh, uh, great information and, and uh, expanded networking opportunities uh, throughout the day. Um, is what we're looking for this year. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going we're gonna to learn about supply chain. We're going to learn about the chemical industry. We're going to learn about energy, global energy impacts that are going on. Um, this, uh, the future energy transition, carbon capture, mm -hmm. um, all of the, the really relevant topics, those are going to be addressed by our speakers. And no fewer than four uh, site or plant managers from our local region will be speaking throughout the day. So. Um, uh, you'll get a chance to hear from a lot of the uh, the, the real decision makers um, in our chemical industry. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, to give our, our viewers a, an opportunity to understand, you know, who's going to be there, just in our sponsorship list, we've got Port Houston, uh, Boral Agency, Shell, Chevron, um, Lee College, Chevron Phillips. Uh, we've got a number of really great sponsors uh, and partners who are helping us through this and who are a part of it. They're all going to have senior representatives uh, at the conference. If they're not speaking, they'll be in the, the audience participating. Exxon Mobil. It'll be a great opportunity. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, great opportunity to network with not just people who work for these companies, but decision makers for these companies. Uh, so having the opportunity to be a sponsor and be promoted with them 
but also to attend and meet them and uh, develop that relationship with them, especially through the networking opportunities. Um, it's invaluable. Fantastic. I would agree. And um, as always, I think everybody leaves with an excited opportunity to meet new folks. Um, and, and you just mentioned it. It's it's rare that you can walk in as a as a, a you know perhaps a business development or salesperson and be in a room full of presidents, decision makers, people in procurement. Your end user and have them all in the room. That's a that's a that's a rarity, and so it's a huge opportunity for those individuals. Um, and and you're, maybe you're not there to sell, but maybe you're just there to build your business, build relationships. It's a great time yeah. for that. So, yeah. um, again, as a reminder to our audience, we get ready to wrap up. Any additional comments from you guys? Well, you just come to learn because mm -hmm. this is a tremendous opportunity to learn and get the benefit of the networking and uh, meeting these people and and. If you can, join our committee and uh, help be a part of planning it and, and making it successful. Fantastic. And so for our audience, uh, I would always encourage you, if you're not a member of the Economic Alliance, go to allianceportregion.com, get plugged in, find some information, attend one of our events. Um, you're welcome to reach out to the team here. Um, they host luncheons. There's a, an events calendar on the page. They can get you plugged in. Pro We're going to have multiple things prior to the Gulf Coast Industry Forum in September. Um, but also a good reminder for those members, he mentioned committees. There's multiple committees. So if you if you have a heart for service or you're looking to get your brand and your name out there, you got to get plugged in. This is yep. not a sit on the sidelines, you know, pay for a sponsorship and hope uh, you, something comes out of it. You, you, you got to be involved. Uh, you get what you get out of it. And so we would highly encourage you to get engaged because it, it's meaningful. Everything we do as an organization has an impact on your community, your family, and the people that you serve. And so we would also ask that you take this episode, pass it along, and share it with somebody that you know if they're not involved or not actively involved, uh, and let you know pay it forward and so people know what we're trying to do and the message that we're trying to achieve. And so as always, guys, I want to thank you for today for joining us. And uh, stay tuned in to the Gulf Coast Growth Show here at the Shell Studio in beautiful Deer Park, and uh, we'll see you guys next week.